So I just have to adjust it the, for the fill in the blanks. Does that make sense? Because it's not going to automatically give credit for those, but I'll just put like, okay, those are worth one point. Or sometimes I'll set them t those to no points just so it'll be when they get their final score for it, it won't throw them off as much. And then I also put little alerts to show them that your score, you know, this is worth 20 points, but your score is not going to, um, is not going to reflect, you know, your full points. I have to, I call them iLearn quirk alerts, and I just put them in text underneath so I can hopefully cut down on their confusion and questions about that. Okay. Are we back? Are we good? We're good. Okay. All right. So, but you can see how this long list of things, and, and they do leave it blank if they haven't taken it prior or concurrently for the list of classes. So, um, so their scores will be different for that one. But I just adjust their overall score. It's a participation thing. To create the fill in the blank answers like, Oh, so what I do is I put just a star instead of listing different options for fill in the blank answers. I just use the little asterisks and then it counts, should count whatever they put in there as correct um, for, the, for the fill in the blanks. Okay. All right. So, let's see. There's more matrices. Those are simpler. But then you can also do an explanation, like, for instance, um, the accommodations one. Do you get accommodations true or false? And if true, explain. So you can add, you know, the little text box for um, explaining other answers. So that helps for the accommodations. And um, I collect data about what kinds of technology they're using, what kinds of online accounts do they have, what kinds of technology are they using to try and give me an idea of what are the types of things that I can do in this class. It's, a, it's an entry level class, so it's a 102 class. So I want to, you know, be sure that I'm, I'm including things that they, you know, can participate in easily. All right, so that's more examples of, of those. Oh, yeah, this scale. I also use the matrix for the scale. Of, it's a Likert scale um, from least to most, right? And then they each have a, a certain value. So um, I want to know how much experience they have in online classes, how much experience do they have with iLearn, um, and then some of the other online tools that we could use in the class. And this gives me my... Um, experience ratings and then when you get to chapter by chapter I had a student just recently ask a question about where do I find the activities well there's a notice on uh, it's an announcement that's right on the home page when they log in that you'll find activities under chapter by chapter and so he obviously hadn't spent much time in in the class I think but um, I just you know my response to him I was like you you know spend some time exploring chapter by chapter and you'll see the activities there because I have the checklist now at the top um, and then I've got all of the links to the different chapters the book itself is is set up in parts different parts and then the chapters underneath that so those are all collapsible sections to help keep that page organized. And then, of course, each chapter is a sub-page. So they'll click on the chapter and then go to the, um, to the chapter page. But that should help keep them. This was the first thing that I've added to help cut down on the confusion, the directions at the top about what to do with when you're going through the chapter and what to do with this page as you're going through the chapter and what's there. Okay, and then on the quizzes page, um, I have the study guide. Oh, no, what? That's still, let's see, study guide, chapters one through eight. Da, 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 da. Right. Oh, okay, so this is what I incorporated. I put a link to the study guide because the study guides are on the quizzes page, right there with the quizzes link. But I still had students asking me, 
saying that, you know, I can't find the study guide. So I thought, why not put it directly in the chapter by chapter where where they'll need it, like where, and because they're supposed to use it as they go through the chapters um, to help guide them. So I, I put it, added in a collapsible section with the study guide right there for them. So it's now there and on the quizzes page. All right, so this is an example chapter page. And you can see, you know, how to complete the chapter, basically. And then you see the activity. That's the subpage that will take them to the activity, the perception activity link. And then they have their chapter notes, which is the little PowerPoint um, title slide that you see. And then I also have a separate collapsible section that begins collapsed. It always starts collapsed for the videos. That's really important because having, I have a number of different videos for each chapter. They're just brief little um, clips from a lot of times popular media, movies and, and television shows that illustrate different concepts and different theories. So, um, and then I'll have in my chapter notes, you know, see whatever the clip title is. Well, so having, you know, four or five videos on a chapter page was causing really long load times for the pages. So this having it in a collapsible section starting collapse really helped cut that down. Okay, so this is the quizzes page where they have two quizzes in the class using those collapsible sections um, and using prerequisites to be sure that they don't skip around, right? I want them to take them in that order. And then I can also use prerequisites to be sure they've taken both quizzes before they take the post-test on the debriefing page. Um, the, the way that I did that is you can see I have the quizzes um, menu item right there and then the debriefing one right after that. So the quizzes page is a prerequisite. It's a required prerequisite for the debriefing. And then not until they've, you know, clicked on the study guides and completed both quizzes, can they access the debriefing page. So the prerequisites can be very helpful for guiding students the way that we want them to be able to complete things as well. Then there's the debriefing checklist. So they're at the end of the class now. They have a letter to future students that they write and they submit um, on here. And then the post-test and the post-test study guide. So that's just making sure that they get everything done for their debriefing. And again, with the collapsible sections to help that go more quickly. All right, so engaging online students. Now, how do we go about doing that most effectively? So the engagement part, first, the first way that I engage them is on during the orientation. There's an introduction step where uh, step six is go introduce yourself. And then I link to a page. And you'll notice that I've used comments instead of the forum. So you can post comments, you can reply to comments, and it creates one full page that you everyone can see. So I really like that comments tool better than the forum for, for that purpose. Then I have activities for each, um, well not each chapter, but not every single one, but for important concepts that I want them to get, like uh, perception. Um, everyone's perception is different. So I have these two videos, classic videos about selective attention. And um, they watch each of the videos. They're supposed to count the basketballs, but there's a distractor in each one. I don't know, you may have seen it in a psychology class that you took. But then they enter their perception activity results, and that's a comments page where they put how many times people pass the basketball, and then, you know, I ask them to comment on and describe their experience. And some people see the distractors, the gorilla, and there's a woman who walks through with an umbrella. And you'd be surprised at the number of people who don't see them. And that's what you end up realizing when you enter your results is that, hey, I saw it, but not everybody did. Or, you know, sometimes students will see and they'll say that they saw other people talk about it and they had to go back and watch it to see it because they were concentrating on counting the basketballs. So this is what the, the comments page will end up looking like for an activity like that. So um, it's one way to engage them. Other activities that I use to engage students in iLearn, um, there's a really cool cultural dimensions activity where they 
go to this site, I link to another site um, where they pick their own culture and then another culture that they're interested in learning more about. 51% um, of Marist students study abroad at some point. So they're all interested, I think, in various cultures other than their own. Um, but and many of them get to go see them in person. So I said, for instance, if you're thinking about studying abroad, um, you know, maybe choose the culture that you're interested in going to or one that you're interested in learning more about. So, and then they get to see side by side these different communication characteristics that these cultures have. Then there's the mind in the eyes activity where they go to this page where they um, they have to read the person's emotions in nothing but their eyes. And this is a, it's a Baron Cohen, it's, um, you know, a psychological, it's, it's a real test that people take and it gives them their results at the end and then they'll enter their results in iLearn. Then there's the Johari window activity where they actually engage with their own friends and family. So um, they go and choose these, uh, these qualities about themselves that they think describe themselves and then it gives them a link and then they send that link to their friends and family members and their friends and family members go to this page and choose the qualities they think represent them and then it gives them a, a readout um, or a final a final Johari window that shows them the qualities that they show to the world um, which would be like the facade but the facade is what they show to the world, but they don't really like see in themselves. And then um, you've got the arena area, which is like where everyone's aware, you know, they're aware of what they're showing people and other people see those qualities in themselves. And then you've got blind spot and then the unknown area, which is unknown to them. So a lot of times they see qualities, they get to find out qualities about themselves that they had no idea that they possessed. And these, there's a, also a dark Johari window, um, but this one usually focuses on positive qualities. So it's, they, I get the best feedback about this activity, and it is extremely interactive and engaging, I think. So, and again, it's, it's a real psychological type um, test, too, so it's valid. It gives you dominant traits and even percentages. So I ask them questions. So what they'll do after they complete this is they'll go into iLearn and I have a tests and quizzes set up where they'll enter these results and they can even upload um, their file. So for instance, I ask them, I just kind of put a little mashup of different screenshots on this page, but I'll ask them a question about what five or six words did you pick that describe you well? And then I did the fill in the blank and then put, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six in the fill in the blank and start it off and then a star so then they can enter those qualities. And um, then the essay question, I included that one too, about, you know, do any of these things surprise you? Love those tests and quizzes tools. So um, this is what the form would look like. The matrix, of course, with a comment about do you disclose your true self to others, yes, no, or it's complicated, and then they can explain it. And then ultimately at the end they upload the document, their complete Johari window document that they receive. Students love that one. All right, so finally, supporting students online. How do we do that when um, for my 102 class I won't see these students in person, especially during the summer when I'm Sometimes I have students on campus that are taking it online instead of in the classroom and they'll come to my office, but that, that of course doesn't happen in the summer. So the Q&A page is helpful for supporting students and I made, I made it using collapsible sections and the comments tool. So students will post a question and then I'll answer it, I'll post an answer. And then what I'll do is I'll use the text tool. I'll go back in and make them sort of a permanent entry on the Q&A page by using the text tool. And I do that, I need to do that especially before I import into a new version of the class. Um, because of course it doesn't retain the comments from the students. But this part with the, the text box will be um, imported correctly, just as it is. 
Another way that I help support students in my online class is with the help pages, like help with APA style. And I use, of course, you know, template documents, links to other help pages, um, like the citation machine to help them generate their APA style citations. And then a having trouble with iLearn page. This cuts down on a lot of questions too, and it's got, you know, all these steps and links to updating their software, you know, simple steps that we probably take for granted and know, you know, easy ways to fix little issues, but it walks students through what would be most helpful to them. They can also book an appointment with me and we can, um, we can Skype or use Google Hangouts or something if it's online only, but I also had students in the spring semester book appointments and then come in to see me in my office. The cool thing about youcanbook.me is that it embeds directly into iLearn. So students can click on that link and then they can click on a time directly in iLearn and then it you know, takes them to the form field to, to um, fill in all of the information that's requested and then they've booked their appointment. What questions do you have? I have a 20-year-old cat over here that, who is drinking water from his fountain, so I, I apologize if that's so loud. <laughs> he loves that fountain. Jennifer, I have a question, and it might be, um, uh, how, did, how did you add the youcanbook.me tool to your site? Is it, is it just using web content and putting the URL in there? Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's all it is. Is just a, a menu item that links directly to the URL. Awesome. And it automatically did it. I know. It's really cool. <laughs> that is very cool. Yeah. And the Johari window sounds really fascinating, and I bet you get a lot of great feedback from your students about that. Yeah, they love finding out things about themselves anyway. So yeah, that's one that they really love. And especially because it engages them with their core group of people, their friends and family, right? So um, that's different than most classes. Most classes, are they're going to engage with only the other students. That is excellent. And sorry, folks, I kept getting, uh, here I go again, I'm getting disconnected once again on the browser. Oh. So if folks posted comments or questions, I may not see those. So I don't, I don't know if that happened, but um, if you posted questions I, in the chat, I did, I missed them. Are there, Maybe are not. there any, um, I don't, I think I got to most of them. I don't know. Okay. Good. Um, so you say the, that your development of this site has evolved over time. And were you always using lessons from the beginning? And mm -hmm. yes. Yes, absolutely. I use lessons pages very heavily. In fact, like the traditional assignments page, I don't make available to students as that that assignments page. Like I I hide that one and then I make a lessons pages and then I link to the assignments for them. Right. So once they when they submit an assignment it takes them to that and they can see all of them but they don't ever go into just that assignments page. Right. Yeah, and my quizzes page is different too. It's a lessons page. My quizzes page is a lessons mm -hmm. page. Yeah, I know. I love that about lessons, um, that you can just embed mm -hmm. it right and then drive the progress. Yeah, and you know what happened with, we did an update last summer, and I used to not like our, our home page for our classes, so I would create my own lessons home page, and I would do things like, um, let's see if we could go back here to the beginning, you can see. I would embed, you know, the course logo because all of my classes sort of have a, an identity that I develop for them. Um, so, so I had designed. You can see I've got the little uh, logo, and you know, they can link to their welcome section. And I had announcements on there and things like that. And 
So I had built that, and then when we updated in one of my courses, it made that the automatic home page. And I'm not sure how it happened exactly, but I remember Louisa calling and saying, how did you do that? And so I said, I don't, I don't know. It's just that I had, you know, a lessons page designated as a home page, and I guess it read it and made it. So now they've created all of the home pages to look like that, and it has the little information area where you can, you know, put in your logo and your information and your announcements all on that one page. Yep. Yeah. So cool. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have to ask Louisa and <laughs> how that how, how yeah. they're doing now. She's not on the call, unfortunately, or we could ask her now. I know she was but, supposed to be. She yeah. must have gotten. Yeah, way late somehow. Yeah. 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 Folks, any other questions for Jennifer before we um, finish up? We've got about ten minutes, so we've got some time for questions or comments. Something that I'm using now that I've used, and I teach research and analytics. Um. And I love having students design their own iLearn pages. And I found, we found a sort of a problem. So I had, I had them do a quantitative and a qualitative research design. And I had one, one lessons page designated as the research designs page, right? And so I had two sections and I had, uh, I added the feature where students create their own pages in the quantitative and qualitative sections. Well, it, in one class, it deleted all of the qualitative ones on that page. And it looked like a student had deleted it. And all of the, everyone's content was gone. Okay, And it looks like they had done it. But they, I think they were just the last person on there. So what I ended up having to do was create two separate pages, lessons pages, one for quantitative designs, one for qualitative designs. And we didn't have any more problems like that. But it was very bizarre. Um, but it ended up, it did it in the other class, too. Those fun. sections and the students, you know, within those sections, I had students create their own pages feature within each section on that one lessons page. And apparently that was just too much for the for the system. I, I assume wow. that's because the way those pages are created is that it creates a link for each student. And so if there are two there, it doesn't know which one to present and conflicts. Ah, that makes sense. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Not so if you, if you had groups, for instance, working, you know, like two students working in a pair, you could probably do that as long as each group had a separate group ID uh, in the managed groups. Um, but it, well, I guess you could do it by creating a group for each student, but that would be kind of obnoxious. Like m use the, yeah. um, the automatic, <laughs> automatically created groups and tell it to put one student in each group. And then you could have the students create individually for one of the lessons items and then as their group self for the second one. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Because <laughs> then it would create separate items on that same page. It would be a strange okay. around, but if you really wanted both of them on the same page. Yeah, it's it's not that big a deal, I don't think. I think it's I just have my two separate, you know, your quantitative design, qualitative design pages, and that works. So. Uh, but it was really great because they can incorporate multimedia. Uh, oh, and then I always enable the student comments, and then I gave bonus points for people going in, which it'll be required this next time around, for um, you know finding and commenting on other people's designs because it gives them ideas for their capping projects that will be coming up in their future. And um, mm -hmm. it was it was really cool, really awesome. cool. Jennifer, thank you so much. This is really a lot of great information. I love how you organized your course and built in the interactivity and engagement and support for your students. Uh, this is really a really great presentation. I can't wait to share it with faculty here at UVA as well. So thank you again. Oh, fantastic. Oh, thank you. This was a really neat experience. Thanks so much. Yeah, great. Um, so we're Should I just log out? or? 
Uh, okay. Yes, you can. Uh, there's a leave button at the upper right, um, or you can just stay until okay. we're done. But either, either way, uh, we're almost done here. Um, the upcoming okay. meeting schedule we have on August 2nd, Andrea Novicki at Duke University uh, presenting on anonymizing grades in Sakai. That should be interesting. I'm, I'm not sure if that's a feature request, but anyway. Uh, it'll be interesting to hear about that. Um, we have two open dates, August 16th and September 6th. And we may wind up canceling one or both because I know that is really busy times for most of us getting uh, back to school underway. And uh, so, but if any of you do have topics that you'd like to hear about or would like to present, um, do reach out and let me know. Zoe's Jira Palooza. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's true. <laughs> if if we don't get a topic, we're going to do Jira Palooza. That's it's almost like a threat. <laughs> All right. Well, of course, uh, nobody has it. Oh, so. Yeah. On September 20th, we're going to have another Atlas Award winner, um, Denise Comer at Duke University, talking about composing the internship experience using social media and digital discourse. So that should be really interesting as well. Um, any other quick announcements or comments? Yes, Jennifer, you are welcome to join all, any or all of the sessions, uh, our online sessions. We usually announce to a couple of the lists and maybe what you ought to do is, is um, here's one of them, Aperio TL, which stands for Teaching and Learning, at Aperio.org, I mean at, um, is that right? Aperio.org, Neil? Um, at Aperio.org, that's right. Yeah. And okay. you can always subscribe by adding a plus subscribe, so like Aperio TL, plus. I can type it in, plus I'd subscribe, like, yeah. Like this? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 okay. no. Here, let me, yeah, let me you put it in. It's a Perio Teal Plus the first time. Oops. Plus subscribe at a Perio.org. And that'll get you subscribed onto oh. the list. And then, the, then when you want to post, you can leave off the plus subscribe part and just write, yeah, or you'll just get the emails coming in. Yeah. 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 So then you'll get the announcement, Jennifer. Um, okay. Who, okay. Okay, great. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. Thank Wonderful. You. Yes. Neil, I, I posted a Slack to you about the interrupted recordings. I don't know if you might have to stitch them together if you can. I don't know, but uh, sorry about that. Um, okay, sure. No problem. I mean, in my experience, it usually ends up not being an issue, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay. okay, good. I hope that's yeah. true. Yeah. Well, thanks, everybody. We're done a few minutes early, um, and I appreciate you guys being here today. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on August 2nd. Actually, I won't be here. I'll be, I'll still be in Spain because I'm going to Spain next week with my daughters, and uh, I believe Neil is going to facilitate that call for us, right, Neil? Yeah, that's Matt awesome. Is yeah. Yep. Que you. maravilla! Patricia <laughs> va a España. Gracias, Laura. Enhorabuena. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Tricia. Have a great time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording now.